Hey guys everyone, this is Absentee Nightmare, and I am going to review The Forest, which um, I got to see a week ago. Um, it is directed by Jason Zada. Now the story in general is a woman named Sarah is traveling to Tokyo to find her sister, um, who has um, stepped into the Aikigahara Forest, which is also called the Forest of Suicides. It is a forest at the base of Mount Fuji that is known to house demons, evil spirits, um, and is known for a lot of suicides occurring within that. So anyone that steps in there usually is either contemplating or is going to do it. So she travels there because they are identical twins, her and her sister Jess. And um, Jess is kind of a troubled woman and uh, went to Tokyo to get away from things and try and start anew. But now that she's wandered into the forest, Sarah kind of has this feeling that something's very wrong and has to travel there to try and find her. Um, once she gets there, she is all warned throughout the whole thing that uh, she should not stay in the forest overnight and also don't wander off the trail. Now, she joins up with a Australian uh, journalist and um, a guide who uh, you normally goes out and does a patrol for suicides uh, to either bring bodies back in or at least help people that are still contemplating to maybe come out and um, find help. So um, she joins with them so that she's not going off alone into the forest and breaks a few of the rules, like wanders off alone and also stays the night. So, of course, with her cho choosing those, the spirits of the forest start causing havoc. Uh, most of it is more perception-based, which is very well done. I really like what they did with that because they um, really mess with your own mind, too, because... The, like, one scene that I really liked was they are getting to a river, and uh, she looks down and sees a body kind of float by. Now, she talks to the Australian journalist um, and points it out to him, and then he continues on, but he's going in a different direction now. They were going one direction, but then all of a sudden he's going as if he's going backwards. But then you see her look back, and the river's going the totally opposite direction. And they actually did pretty nice special effects where it wasn't just reversed or just flipped footage. It actually looked like it was a different orientation of the river, and it was always that way. So it was a really cool little scene there, and I really liked how they did that. Um, they always had things going off in the background. There was always something moving. Um, occasionally you would see, like, very faint things speaking behind the trees or something like that, which, um, I like that subtlety in movies like these, and that's what I think they needed, because, um, this definitely felt like a very, um, kind of an homage to Japanese horror films. And with those, it usually builds up a lot of tension with a lot of stuff going on in the background or uh, sounds, which uh, this movie does very well. And also just, um, they do, do have jump scares, but they do do a few of them rather successfully, where they have a lot of tension building up to the final jump, which works. It's not so much, it's not as much of a startle as it is just they've built you up so much that your body's just going to release that energy with anything. So even a very small thing can cause you to jump, which and that was very effective. There was a couple scares in there that were not as effective. They um, kind of went to that face morphing thing, which um, I've seen a lot of American uh, horror movies do when they want to do a jump scare. Um, and it really just, it, it kind of bothers me now. It looks very plasticky, so it it didn't really work for those scares, but there was only like a couple in there that did that. Now, with the movie cre uh, creating this per this perception thing, you're seeing the main character, Sarah, showing that she's probably not the most well-adjusted, even though um, she talks about Jess having a lot of um, issues at home, um, other uh, problems and such. This movie kind of brings the theme of the concept of, sure, Sarah seems like this very well-to-get-put-together uh, person, but in a situation like this, all, the, all of a sudden, she's breaking down. And they pull that off very well, and um, they even have one scene where she is trying to tell a story of um, their background, of like why she thinks Jess is like this. And when she's telling the story, you are being presented with a totally different visual 
um, interpretation of what she's saying. So that was very well done because you're noticing that she has a totally different concept of what went on, even though you now see what the truth is. And you see this very early, so there's not really much of a spoiler. But you could tell what the truth is, but she's saying something totally different. So I think that really worked in building the character. Um, the problem is that at the beginning of the movie, it didn't really build that. Like, this was a little bit, like, probably about 10-15 minutes after uh, the, the beginning of the movie. And the beginning didn't really do a good job of really setting Sarah's character up really well. Um, because it was Sarah flying in, and her in a taxi, and then you see quick flashbacks of her sitting at a dinner table with her husband's boss at the table as well and her staring off into space, but it's a very quick scene, and then another scene where she's packing and um, having a little argument with her husband about like whether she should go or not. Um, and these are very quick scenes, and I think they could have been done a little bit better, where they were drawn out a little bit more just so we can be introduced more to her before she finally gets into this. Um, the editing was a little bit strange because of this, because they were jumping around. You didn't know where she was and what was going on. Like... Um, the one part that really confused me was, um, after she landed and was in her hotel room, it's a very beautiful room, uh, the window opens up on its own and shows the whole city, and then very quickly after that happens, she's all of a sudden on the street again. And it's, that's a very strange transition because we don't see her transition or why she is now walking on the street going to a restaurant. There was really no point to it, other than having a little bit of a scene gag where she orders food and the food is still alive and it's kind of moving and locals are kind of laughing at her. So there was really no point to that because then the very next scene was her traveling to the forest and finding a place to stay next to that. So I'm, that scene was probably not even needed. So that kind of confused me at first, but that didn't really do a good job of building Sarah's character up. But once she is actually at the forest, that's when the, when the, the characterization kind of comes forward a bit more. She meets the others, and that's where the, most of the movie is. And that's um, what I think worked for this, where I... If, if it was edited like it was at the beginning, it wouldn't have been as good. Um, it builds very well throughout the whole plot line, um, it gets more intense, you see more things occurring, um, learn more about her, and watch her basically suffer through this as the forest just messes with her throughout the whole thing. And um, they did a nice job, very good camera camera work where they're showing how, in, how impossible it is to see where you are in this forest. Like, even though it's very thin trees, they're so bunched together that you just look out and you just see a sea of them. And you cannot tell where you are anymore, so it's it's very obvious that you can get very easily lost in this forest. Then, as we go along, it plays into how do, do we believe the guy she's with at that moment, the, the journalist, is his intentions good, basically. He sounds like he is, but maybe not. Maybe he is again. Um, the, the movie messes with your own perception, just like the forest is messing with hers. Um, but overall, it's a very nice uh, film that I kind of enjoyed. Um, it, uh, uh, other than those rather weak scares at some points, overall it was fun to watch, and I liked how it, um, how it finished everything off, even though um, at the end it could have uh, changed how the ending was, because it just, um, they ended in such a very uh, cliche uh, fashion for a movie that is PG-13. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.